Hello, hello guys. How are we doing? And welcome back to the channel. For us controller players, this is as easy as it gets. We're going to be going through five ways in which you can abuse aim assist, whether you're playing MW3 ranked play, MW3 basic multiplayer, or Warzone. This is how you're going to get the most out of your aim assist with some things you probably don't know. So one mistake I see a lot of people making when playing uh, ranked play when I'm spectating people is that when they're holding a pre-aim, they are not moving their left stick. The first lesson I want you guys to take on board is the fact that if you're not using your left stick or if you're not moving the left stick while you are aiming in, you're not going to get aim assist. Here's an example of just where I'm pre-aiming this bot. I'm in a bot lobby, obviously, but I'm not moving my left stick. You can see just how clearly it is that I'm not... There's no aim assist taken into effect whatsoever there. It's almost like I've got aim assist off. Um, so yeah, make sure when you're aiming in and you're pre-aiming something, use your left stick. So here's another example where I am moving the left stick. And um, you're going to see just how much aim assist I do get here. Uh, it's the exact same part of the map. There's no sort of glitches like that. It is the simple fact that when you're moving your left stick and you're pre-aiming, you're going to get aim assist, whether you're just wiggling it left and right, if you're holding a nice slow strafe. Generally, I like to wiggle left and right when I'm pre-aiming something, but this is going to just make sure that aim assist is doing a fair amount of the work for you. You're only going to really have to move your right stick to aim yourself uh, for some minor adjustments what the aim assist can't do. Or, I'm not going to be, I'm going to be completely honest here, if you're playing with someone again with completely unreal movement who's slide cancelling here or there, jump shotting, you are going to have to rely on your own ability to aim a little bit more. This isn't going to solve all your problems, but if you ever find yourself getting absolutely pooped on, if you're pre-aiming something and you're like, oh, have I missed that? I've whiffed all my bullets. This will be why. Now, when you're in a sort of a close range gunfight here and you feel like hip firing is a better option, the same thing goes. If you're not moving your left stick, you're not going to get aim assist. There's this thing in the game called rotational aim assist, which basically rotates your character when you are strafing that keeps your crosshairs more, not completely, it's not aimbot, but more centered towards the player you're facing. In this clip here, you can see I'm not using my right stick. I'm not using any sort of manual aim or whatsoever, but my crosshairs remain relatively close to the enemy I'm looking at here. This is what you want to be doing. You want to be moving your left stick. You want to be strafing a little bit, whatever gunfight you're taking on. Now, additional to short range and medium range gunfights, you can also use aim assist and abuse aim assist per se to increase your chances of winning gunfights at long range. A slight wiggle of your left stick or a slight strafe of your left stick, I, as I say, I prefer to wiggle it left and right just because it keeps it relatively central, um, can maintain your aim at long distances here. You can see here in this clip without shooting, a slight wiggle to my aim is making sure that my aim remains on point, which means that if enemies are also making micro movements, if they're strafing slightly left, slightly right, the aim assist is going to do a fair amount of the work for you, which means that you really don't have to do much other than make some slight corrections and obviously account for some any, any sort of cracked movement the enemy player makes, even at long range. Now, when you sort of mix this into shooting, you can also reduce horizontal recoils. Now, a lot of guns, uh, sometimes the MCW can have horizontal recoil. It depends on your setup. But a lot of guns do have horizontal recoil. And basically, that what that means is that when you shoot your gun, your aim naturally is going to go left and right because of the recoil of the gun. Now, moving left and right very slightly, wiggling your left stick when you are shooting will negate the horizontal recoil because what will happen is your aim will slightly drift off target because of the horizontal recoil, but because you're moving your left stick left and right, the aim assist will kick in and bring it back onto target, which sort of magnetizes you somewhat to the enemy you're shooting at. Now, there's a common misconception that the higher your FOV, the weaker your aim assist. And people allude to the idea that if you're on an 80 FOV, your aim assist will be far stronger than somebody who's on 120 FOV. But this isn't strictly true. The, the FOV doesn't technically adjust your aim assist, but it does give you the illusion of stronger aim assist because we're going to get into it here. It, on this screen you're seeing right now is a screenshot of somebody who is on, or me obviously, who is playing on 120 FOV. And you can see this green area around the mannequin is the area in which you'd obtain aim assist, which is obviously a fair amount either side of the mannequin. Now, if you're on a 27 inch monitor, this measures to be about 0.5 inches. Um, now obviously, aim assist types will differ uh, and things like that, but this aims to be about 0.5 an inch on your screen, you will have that aim assist. Now, if we zoom in a little bit to 90 FOV, this is how, if you're playing on 90 FOV, this is what it will look like. You can see that green box in which you'd obtain aim assist, which is still the same distance apart in game, is a little bit bigger. Now, this is actually 60% larger on your screen if you're on a if you're on a monitor or whatever um, than it would be if you were on 120 FOV. This measures up 0.8 inches compared to a 0.5 inches on your screen that you're seeing as a real human and therefore you have the illusion that with lower FOV you have more aim assist and now the reason for that is because it's simply the aim assist window is bigger 
because you're zoomed in more. That's literally all it is. So if you're on a 15 inch gaming TV, you're gonna notice it obviously more because the visual effect will be scaled up. But from 120 FV to 90 FV, your aim assist is going to be 60%. Well, it's gonna, the window is gonna appear 60% greater on whatever monitor screen gaming TV you are using. So this is why a lot of pros play on 100 or around 100 because it's a nice mix between being able to see your surroundings and obtaining like a larger area of aim assist on the screen. Warzone players obviously want to tend towards the, they want to be a little bit more aware. It's a battle royale, you're in and out of buildings and things like that, but you really want to find your balance. If you're on Warzone, do what you need to do, but for multiplayer gamers and uh, MW3 rank play gamers, get to 100 and either go up or down up to five either way, I'd say, is a nice little mix uh, for you guys to have. Now let's take a look at a couple of settings that can help you abuse aim assist even further. So first things first, you want to make sure that your aim assist type is either on Black Ops or Standard. The difference between the two is as follows. So Black Ops is a little bit more sticky than Standard aim assist. However, the downside to this is the fact that if you're dealing with two players at once, if you've got two players literally running straight ahead at you, um, Sometimes you can feel that your aim gets stuck in between both players and you, can, you can't really transfer from one to the other quite as easily. But that's because of how sticky Black Ops aim assist is. So if you feel like this is a situation that you get into a lot where you're dealing with two enemies at once, maybe try standard because it's going to be a little bit more forgiving in those sort of situations. But if you want just relatively stickier aim assist, then Black Ops is the one you're going to want to pick. Uh, when we look at aim response curve type, this is how your input transfers into how you turn in game. So if you, you this determines basically how much of your right stick needs to move in order to impact how much your player rotates in game. Now, people play on dynamic, and this is what I would also advise doing. And the reason for that is because it enables you to make very fast moves. So if you jam your right stick all the way to the right, it's going to the game is going to know because it's dynamic that you want to zoom to the right quite quickly. However, when you make really small micro adjustments with your right stick, Dynamic is also going to know this and know that it doesn't want to increase your zoom quite as much as it would do if you were yanking it. So it's a nice mix between being manoeuvrable, being able to 180 people, with the addition of being able to make micro adjustments fairly easily. Now we look at things like ADS sensitivity multiplier and dead zones. Now I can't mention this in a bunch of videos, so I'm going to reiterate this fairly quickly. Um, but you want your... A, your general sensitivity to be anywhere between four and I would suggest seven, maybe eight at a push. And the reason for that is you want your centering to be on. Half of aiming is uh, centering. Uh, you don't want to aim in and then have to adjust your aim. You want your centering to be where the enemy's going to be. And as a result, you don't want your sensitivity to be too high. Now, if you are playing on that higher end of your sensitivity, maybe seven or eight, but you do feel like when you're aiming in, your sensitivity is a little bit too high and you want to reduce that and maintain a more accurate uh, shooting pattern, then you want to reduce your ADS sensitivity multiplier, which you can do in your settings. Personally, my sensitivity is 7.7. 7. I play with a 0.8 ADS multiplier so that I'm able to maneuver relatively quickly around the map. Um, but also when I'm ADS, I'm locked in and I can shoot my uh, shoot my gun fairly straight. Finally, we're then going to look at dead zones here. So dead zones are in your controller settings and you want to make sure there's a nice new stick drift test in game now which you can use and utilize so you turn that on and just play around with your stick flick your stick right or left and it should go back to zero if it doesn't increase your dead zone but you want the dead zone to be as low as possible so that you're able to the game recognizes your responses on your controller as quickly as possible until you get to the point where you're in that aimless um the dead zone stick test and you're getting anomalies that are throwing you off of zero in short you want your dead zones to be as small as possible without stick drift. So that's pretty much going to do for today's video. I hope you liked it. If there's any other tips you have for the other controller gamers out there, feel free to let me know. Obviously, I don't have a keyboard and mouse uh, tips and tricks coming because I simply don't have the knowledge of that. Um, but if there's anything else you want to see on the channel, feel free to let me know down in the comments. Ciao for now.